Hey everyone, I am back with a list of recommendations. Today I have six shoe styles that I think are, I hate to say essential, because I don't want you to feel like you have to run out and buy any of these things if you don't have them in your closet. But I have six shoe styles that are really nice to have for fall in your closet. Now I do have a tiny disclaimer, and that is that I live in South Texas and our idea of fall is very different from many of you watching. So take my advice, take it with a grain of salt, add to it what applies to the climate where you live and run with it. And if you have great suggestions for some other things for those of our friends watching in colder climates, please by all means leave those suggestions down in the comments. Let's start <laughs> with the shoe that I wear the most. And I use the word shoe very loosely. I'm talking about a good slipper slash house shoe. And this is my all time favorite. So much so that this is my third pair and I'm about to order a fourth. These are not what you think. These are not the Ugg slippers. I have had those. They are lovely for a time. And then they get all matted as all of these shoes do that have the either the real shearling or the faux shearling. They get matted down, they get disgusting. The only difference between this shoe and the Ugg is that this one, it's from Amazon, it's about 20 bucks or so, I can't remember exactly, but it's affordable. And the Ugg one, you're gonna be very upset that you just spend $100 on slippers that you can wear for one season. They are indistinguishable from the Ugg version and they come in a bunch of colors. And I've mentioned this before, but because they're so affordable, I like to get a couple different colors to match my pajamas slash outfits. These are great for walking around the house. They're great if you have to run outside with the dog, go grab the garbage, whatever. Because of the thicker sole, they're suitable for outdoor use. I wouldn't say like go to the grocery store in them. I mean, if you wanna be Kathy Hilton, be Kathy Hilton. If you're a Real Housewives Beverly Hills fan, you know what I'm talking about. But um, I think these are fabulous and a must have for the fall and into winter season. Now we are moving on to actual shoes. And I do want to stress that everything you're going to see is pretty much in a neutral shade. Shoes compared to most of the other pieces in your wardrobe are a higher price point than many of the other things that you have in your closet. So if you're going to spend a good chunk of money on these things, then make it something you can get the most wear out of, if that makes any sense. Once you have a fully, I want to say fully funded, but a fully fleshed out shoe wardrobe and you have room in your budget to go for some more colors, by all means, I think that's great. But I do think of budget all the time. And if you're new here, you may not know that I have done a full budgeting series with my husband. I will put a link to that playlist wherever the I is over here and I'll put it down in the description box as well. Anyway, let's get to the actual shoes. So first off is a look that I struggle to pull off, but I still think it's something that we should all have in our shoe wardrobe. And that is a very, basic, low key, low profile white sneaker or neutral sneaker. If you prefer a beige sneaker or maybe a black sneaker, go with what you prefer. And I say sneaker instead of gym shoe. I'm not talking about an athletic shoe that you can wear for fitness and athletic event. I'm talking about a good sort of sneaker slash walking shoe. This one, because it's white, just does not show up on camera the way I want it to. This is from Dolce Vita. This one is my favorite. It goes in and out of stock as far as the full white leather version. There are millions of styles of the Dolce Vita, I think it's called the Xena sneaker, in some really crazy prints and patterns, which I do have as well, but I feel, again, like first get the one that goes with all the things. What I especially like about the Dolce Vita sneaker, Vita, yeah, sneakers, is it has a tiny little wedge in the back, just a tiny little bit. So it does give a little bit of a lift to your foot and your entire leg. And then as you know, the trend is not to actually tie your shoelaces. I've never really mastered how to do that. So I like that they come this way. I don't have to think about it. These do run a tiny bit big. So I would recommend going a half size down from your actual size. All of them do. I usually wear a size seven. I get a six and a half in the Dolce Vita sneakers. But what I like about these is even though they are sneakers, they're not a blunt rounded toe. I love all things Walmart. I think that's abundantly clear by now. I don't love most of the sneakers that they have on offer because they have a very blunt rounded toe and unless you have very long feet, they're not particularly flattering. Again, these tips that I am giving you are huge generalizations. Of course, there will be exceptions to all of these things and if this does not apply to you, we'll move on to the next tip. Okay, so I have a few other sneaker recommendations. I love the Madewell Sidewalk sneaker. That's another favorite. Again, 
in and out of stock, but usually carried every single season. Just talked to a friend of mine who went on a walking tour of Italy. She's a big fan of the Echo shoes. They are more of a true walking shoe that have a sneaker style. There are all kinds at all the price points. I will list a few more, of course, down in the description box. Number three of the styles I think are must-haves for your fall wardrobe is a loafer. And here you can go nuts. There are so many options. A loafer silhouette is a classic style. It's not going anywhere. It's been around forever and it's not going away. Now, when I was coming up in the years, the big thing was the penny loafer, very 80s preppy J. Crew kind of thing. I don't really see a lot of call for that particular loafer. The loafer style I'm seeing more of now is now I'm showing you one with an open back because again, I live in San Antonio and our idea of fall is 65 degree weather. If you live somewhere that is colder, choose a different style. But the general front of it, whether it has a back or not, is more of a clean line, some sort of accent across the top of the shoe, not so much the penny loafer insert thing. I think this is very much a play on the Gucci style of, of slide mule loafers. Uh, these are not from Gucci. These are from Amazon, much different price point. It does have memory foam in it, which is nice. You're gonna see a silhouette that has, again, a slightly longer front, maybe not a full on point, but an almond shape is a nice sort of in between style. There's also another really popular style is this one, this is from last year, but you can still probably find versions of this. The one that was released this fall has more of a tone on tone. It's not necessarily metallic, but this one is definitely pointed, big chunky chain, a lot of embellishments. Another one I've recently picked up and I heard is back in stock is, now this one is closed, but it does have that slight embellishment there. So you're gonna find all different kinds of loafers. You can go absolutely nuts. You can combine several trends and silhouettes. You can even find loafers these days that have a platform heel and a chunky heel. So there is something for everybody. Number four, I would say my most worn actual shoe outside of the slipper is a booty. And by booty, I don't mean a boot. We'll talk about that next. I'm talking about a shorter, a shorter shaft that comes around to your ankle bone. Some of the styles go a little bit higher on the leg. So the one that I wear the most is this one. And this one is a couple years old. They do have a newer version of it. This style is specific in that it has the cutout on the side, which especially when you're wearing it with skinny jeans can make your leg look a little bit longer. It does make it tricky to wear with socks. I usually don't wear socks with these, Sometimes I'll wear it no-show if I know I'm gonna be walking in them a lot just so I don't have to worry about blisters. I don't have a specific no-show sock to recommend to you. They all kind of stink. If you have found a true no-show that works in booties, I like a real thin one, please let us know in the comments. You're gonna help all of us out. The one thing in common with all the booties that I personally recommend is it's gonna have a chunky heel. Makes it a lot easier to walk in, whether it's a heel like this, which is about three inches or so. Maybe it's a much smaller heel without the cutouts, like this one. It's still a chunky heel. It's not a kitten heel or a stiletto heel. They have those out there. And if you want them, of course, but I'm saying like for your basic shoe collection, let's start with a chunky heel. Makes it much easier to walk in. This has a very subtle, tiny little cutout on the side, but a much cleaner look. And is, this one is a little bit more of a rounded toe, but it's still more of an oval almond shape than a blunt edge to it. Now my most recent shoe purchase actually combines quite a few of the trends, but it's still a booty. So this is a booty. It's based on a Chelsea boot silhouette because it has, I believe this is called the gusset. I could be completely wrong, but this sort of thing on the side there is very classic in a Chelsea style. We've also added a chunky heel a heel period, usually Chelsea boots are flat, pretty flat, and then a lug sole on top of it. This is a lot of different styles going on. I like this one, even though I generally am not a huge fan of the big chunky heel. It makes my chunky legs look chunkier usually, but because this one has a heel to it, it does help elongate my, sh my legs. And I like the slightly taller shaft because it really looks good with those straight leg pants that might be a little bit cropped. I know a few of you were, were very anxious about 
the, the high water, is that what you call them? Where there's skin showing between the cropped straight leg and the bottom of top of your shoe. This bridges that gap so no skin is showing and it shows off the straight leg silhouette and the booty. So it's a win-win there. A very similar style that I picked up during the anniversary sale that is still available. This is more of a Western influence. You can tell with these additions here and just the way the shoe comes, but it doesn't have all the Western cowboy style sort of embellishments. It is a little bit taller than on the shaft, which again, works really well with boot cut, obviously, uh, flare and the straight leg jeans or pants. And I love the chunky heel. Number five in our shoe must haves is a full on boot. I am not talking about an over the knee boot. I think that's a bonus extra if you want to, but first let's make sure you have a nice basic just to the knee or just under the knee boot goes all the way up the calf. I have a couple new ones to share with you. Of course, the classic is a riding boot, which I do not think is going anywhere. Mine have actually gone somewhere. Mine are at the cobbler because they need to get resold and kind of cleaned up their over a decade old and they have been through several continents, several, two, two continents, that's a lot. Two newer to me shoes, the Western style is huge this year and technically it is a riding boot. Maybe not this one, this one is a little more decorative. This is from Dolce Vita, but there are cowboy boots at all price points, all styles. Do check the description box, I'll list a few options for you at all the price points. But you know, it's a slightly lower heel. This is not a full zip up, but at least it has the zip up opening here. And of course the pointed toe, very classic part of a cowboy boot. They're calling them Western style now, but I always call them cowboy boots and that's how I'm going. But I got them in this very neutral shade just because it can go with so many things. Of course they do come in other colors. And I do think if you don't get the nude tone, then the next one would be more like a tan, I think goes with everything. Speaking of tan, if you want a slightly different heel, but something that's still very easy to walk around in, look at this one. This is, this is not, this is like an inch and a half maybe. I mean, it's, it's not much of a heel at all. And this particular boot does come in other materials, like just plain leather, suede, that's not with the embossing but I decided to expand my wardrobe since I have all the basics on a boot and then some, and I went with this. It comes to kind of just below the knee, I would say, very, very comfortable. And again, great to wear with dresses and skirts. So far, that's all I've worn them with. And then I also want to address wider calves. And there are two retailers that I know of specifically that do have wide calf options, and they are two very different price points, Walmart and Nordstrom. So definitely do check those out. Again, I'm asking everybody watching, if you know of some other retailers that do have wide calf options for boots, please let us know in the comments. We're all friends here, we're helping each other out. And then the last style that I think is pretty essential no matter where you live is some kind of rain boot or waterproof boot. I have um, a few pairs of, they look like normal booties, they're by the brand Blondo, but they are waterproof. But if you wanna go with an actual rain boot, Instead of winter, we just have more of a rainy season here in San Antonio. So one that's super old, and this exact style is not around, but the boot is, is a Sperry, I think they call them their saltwater boot. This one is unique in that it's zipped up the side, and I haven't seen these in a while. I'll check and see if I can, usually I can find them on DSW or Amazon, the older styles. Just find something neutral that goes with all the things. This worked great for me. I also brought this on my Alaskan cruise and wore this when we went dog sledding on the top of a glacier. So this one works in snow as well. I mean, I don't know if it would work for long periods of time in the snow. I don't live in a winter climate. I have no idea. I should add, I grew up in the Chicago area. I left there when I was 24. I have lived here longer than I lived in the in Chicago or the state of Illinois. So I remember cold, but again, I was also really young. And when you're young, you don't feel the cold the same way. I've also spent the rest of my adult life avoiding snow. So like no ski vacations and things like that. But if you want a true rain boot, I do want to recommend the hunter boots or the hunter boot style. Now I have the classic tall rubber all the way up to the very, to the knee hunter boots. And they're great if you're, wading in water. I mean, literally I have stood in my pool on the top step in them, but most of us are not walking through rivers and streams. And while they're great, they 
also are really hard to get off by yourself, like basically impossible. So I like the shorter style. There's some that are even shorter than this. But I think this one's pretty cute. I like the quilted pattern. Uh, I wish it had a zipper. Some of them do now, which is even better. But this shorter shaft does make it a lot more user-friendly. You can get it off by yourself. This is it for me for the weather type boots. I have one bonus silhouette. I am not gonna say that this is a must have, but it's a fun addition to your closet if you are looking for one, and that is the clog. I don't have a clear memory of when these were in style the first time around, I think it was the 70s. I was born in 73, I'm sure my mom had these. I got these from Walmart, yep, Walmart. Uh, they're fun, they're super fun. And it's a fun little trend. I also spent, um, I'm gonna admit it, a ridiculous amount of money on these from Veronica Beard. Different price point than Walmart. It's a different shoe, you know, it's open-toed. So this is an interesting style, but with the trendier pieces, I do think it's best to go with a less expensive retailer, get your fun with it, and then, you know, put your money in something like a classic boot silhouette, a booty you're gonna wear every day, a good pair of sneakers that'll give you good support. But that is just my opinion, as it is in all of my videos. All right, that's it for my fall styles that I recommend that you have in the shoe department. That was an awkwardly stated sentence, but you know what I'm saying? I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything to add to this, please do leave those comments. I read every single one. I'm so glad you are here, and I hope I see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.